Hello and good evening to everyone within the sound of my voice. It's your Pastor Brent once again, joining you guys for the second to the last day of our week for this week's Night of Devotion series. Yes, it's boring. I sound boring because it's cold. Anyway, let's go ahead and warm ourselves up with the Word of God. Anyway, uh, first and foremost, I just want to go ahead and say again, thank you so much to Janine and Kayanga for everything that they've been singing. Well, she's she's on a roll, guys. I mean, let her keep singing and don't 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 discourage her. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and just uh, take a recap here. Again, we've been talking about faith. We've been talking about how faith by the faith that has been established and authored in us through the Lord Jesus Christ, we were able to go ahead and see things beyond um, what our eyes actually perceive, you know? And also, uh, I, I keep hanging on to that, that, you know, Christ is the absolute guarantee in all of the possibilities that we could, all, we could have. But today, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna dive into something different. Yesterday, we talked about well, how the Lord Jesus Christ is just so faithful and He is the one we can trust in in spite of all circumstances. And I think, yeah, yesterday was more of a reminder. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just jump into what we have today. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 10. I was only supposed to be talking about verse 9, but I figured I'd just go ahead and throw in the rest of the context here. So again, yeah, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 10. Uh, what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Now, friends, we've been talking about communion and we've been having communion i believe it was a good call on pastor oscar's part back in the day because for the longest time we've only been having communion just for the first sunday of each month then pastor oscar had the brilliant idea of us celebrating communion every week and every sunday i believe that um i believe that there was some wisdom a lot of wisdom there actually and part of it is just for us to really drive down and if anything if 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 we forget anything else from what was spoken on that day's sermon if, or if we forget any of the songs that we sang on a particular service at least we go away remembering the finished work of the lord jesus christ specifically through communion but here we read that if it we confess with our mouth that jesus is lord and believe in our hearts that god raised him from the dead you will be saved it's important here, it's important here, I want to just go ahead and drill down where it says, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Now what does this mean for me? In my opinion guys, when Christ rose from the dead, and I, I mean if you've been following me and if you've been listening to what I've been talking about for so many Sundays previous and prior to this, uh, to this, uh, this time that we're having now, I've been saying a lot of stuff about the beauty of the resurrection. You see, when Christ rose from the dead, He proclaimed His superiority over death. And, and 
death had done its worst. Death had given its worst. Sin had been poured out upon him at the cross. And death, therefore, had done its worst to him by just literally just tearing him apart. Mind, body, and soul. Him suffering all of the consequences leading up to the ultimate of consequences, the wages of sin, which is death. Jesus Christ took all the death that could ever be possibly taken. Right? Are you guys with me so far? And here's the thing. If we believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, we are saying... I mean, from my perspective, we're saying that God, or Jesus for that matter, is superior to death. Jesus Christ rose to life because there was no more death to be taken, and therefore there was nothing left for Him to do but to live. Isn't that awesome? Yeah? Also, uh, what else comes into mind when we, uh, when we say that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead? Well, well, I think, I think that's... I think that's a good place for us to start. The superiority of Jesus has Jesus has Jesus Christ's eternal life over his death, over the death that any of us or, or all of us can endure. Friends, um, if you are with me when I talked about hope, I certainly talked about how the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, when 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 we were supposed to be talking about hope, I thought it would be right for us to double down on how we talk about legacy. And from what we understood, let me just summarize it really quick. What, what, what I understand is that our legacy is whatever was passed on to us or whatever was transmitted to us from a predecessor. And when we talk, therefore, about the legacy of Christ, we talk about what was passed on to us from the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, by, by going into the Word and diving into the Word, let me just summarize that Christ's legacy, more than anything else, was His eternal life transmitted towards us so when we say that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ's legacy we are believing in his eternal life and what did we just say here I mean what I what do I mean when I say if I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead I am saying that I am I'm just saying whatever I said a while back you know I'm just saying it in my words so my challenge you for you tonight guys is what does it mean for you I'd like to know what does it mean for you personally? I know you guys have been hearing from what I've been saying. I know you guys have been hearing from what your other fellow pastors, God bless their hearts, and what they've been been sharing. They've been sharing this stuff day in and day out. It's been been more of a more constant for them. So it's something that's already in their minds and in their hearts. But I want to ask you guys, what does it mean for you that God raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead? What does it mean? Can you say it in your own words? We've been going through a lot of changes here in the Good News Community Church. And part of it is us changing our mission and us changing our vision. And also part of this was us also establishing a statement of faith. One thing that I believe is important for all of us, especially us pastors. And part of our statement of faith, I mean... As we, as we develop our own statement of faith, I believe in these coming months, we're going to be coming up with our own constant statement of faith, something that we can all believe in, and therefore is one thing that we can continue down to you guys. Um, the statement of faith is supposedly going to touch down on what we think about the Word, what we think about the Lord Jesus Christ, about God's salvation, salvation sin and death, and all that good stuff. But I want to ask you guys, what's your statement of faith? What's your personal statement of faith? It's good for a church to have a statement of faith, but I believe that each and every one of us, as the Lord Jesus Christ is that close to us, and as He is the living Word that is alive in us, and as we are alive in the living Word, it, it ought to come naturally for us to overflow enough for us to have our own personal statement of faith. So I want to go ahead and ask you guys, what your, what's your statement of faith? And let me ask with that question, what does it mean to you that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? What does it mean to you that God raised the Lord Jesus Christ out of darkness, out of sin, out of the death, out of death, and into glorious life? What does it mean to you? Go ahead and just leave your answers on the comment section because I really want to know what you guys think. 
And yeah, sure, you can go ahead and copy what, whatever we've all been saying, but I want it to come in your words. Yeah? Father in heaven, be with us tonight. And I thank you, Jesus, that you provide great and awesome wisdom towards each and every one of us by the power of your Holy Spirit, which has been poured out upon each and every one of us. Lord Jesus, I thank you for wisdom. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have given my brothers and sisters all my, you've given them minds and you've given them hearts to really just figure out for themselves what, this, what, the, what your resurrection really means to them. And so right now, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for open eyes and open hearts. Great wisdom that only comes from you. I'm thankful, Lord Jesus, that as we continue down this line, Lord, you continue to just finish the work that you have started in us. Thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, go ahead and like, comment, and share. Thank you so much for bearing with your Kuya Brent, for Pastor Brent all this time. Uh, and yeah, God bless you. Have a good rest. God bless you again. Bye. <laughs>